Welcome to this overview video of Visual Signal, a signal processing and analysis tool that is easy to use and efficient. So let's get started. When you first open Visual Signal, you will be greeted with this layout. Over in the top is the toolbar. Here is the visualization window, the network window, and the property window. Now in the toolbar you have your basic options such as file, edit, and view. But over in the tools area is where you'd have your preference menu. Here's where you'd be able to change some, some default values such as you know, the default plot parameters and the time frequency plot default C values. So in order to use Visual Signal, you need to first have a license. So you'd go to Help, License Manager, and you'd import a license file that was sent to you from ANCAD. If you don't have a license file, you need to first get this host ID, which is unique to every computer, you'd copy this host ID, and then you'd send it to support at ANCAD.com, requesting a license. Now, after you get your license file, you need to import it by clicking Import, choosing which license file it is, you know, like right here, and then you'd hit open. After the license file is imported, it will show up here. It will tell you if the status is expired or it's okay, which version it is, which product, and when it expires. So now I will start with an example project. The first thing I would do is I would import data. So I'd click over here and then I click import data in the network window. Then I choose the data and I'd open it. Now a green module just appeared in the network window. The network window is where you'd be doing all your your managing of the, your modules. So over here I could click on it and the first thing I'd want to do is view the data. So I'd right click this module, go to viewer, and then click channel viewer. This just attached a channel viewer to my data. So now in the visualization window, I have my data in a graph. Over here in this network window, you can drag around modules. You can even disconnect. You can disconnect modules or you can reattach them by clicking each module and then attaching it to the module. As you can see in this this data set, I have two two different channels. One's represented by the black lines and one's represented by the blue lines. Now, I only want to look at one channel. So the first thing I'd do is I'd right click this data because everything I want to do starts from this data. So, I right click this data. I'd go over to compute channel channel switch. Now this switches out a channel. So it takes the multi-channel data set and pulls out one specific channel. If you ever get confused on what each module does, if you mouse over a module, it will give you a brief description of that module. It tells you what these modules do. So now over here, if I click on the switch module, you'll notice that the property window changes. Each module has its own specific property values. So if I click viewer, now I have all the viewer module properties. And if I click on data, I have my data ones. And if I click on switch, I have my switch properties. In the property menu is where you'd be able to make changes to that module. The default property of the switch one pulls out the first channel of my data set. Now over here, I'd be able to change that. If I want to pull out the second channel, I click over here and I click 2. Now this module inside has my second data channel, not the first one. If you ever get confused on what each specific property does, over here in the property window, you have a property description. So whenever you click on a, a property, the description changes and it will tell you what the property does. If I go back over here, I want to change it to the first channel. That's how I do it. Now that the first channel is switched out, I want to attach a viewer. So now I can see 
the first channel. So now I have this channel. So what I just did there was zoom in with, within the X values. In the toolbar, you'll have your zoom X, zoom Y, zoom rectangle, or be able to pan. Uh, this is how you go back to the default. So let's say I'd want to zoom in between 6 seconds and 12 seconds. What I would do is I make sure my zoom right now is on zoom X and I zoom in between 6 and 12. So I click on 6 and I drag it to 12. So now as you can see my X values changed from 6 to 12. That time window is now specifically from 6 to 12. Now if I want to go even more I can go to 8 to 9.5 and now my x-axis is 8 to 9.5. If I want to go back, all I have to do is right-click the viewer and click View Home. This goes back to the default window. So the first thing I'd want to do to this, this first channel is do a Fourier transform. So I'd right-click this switch module, which is the first channel, because I switched out the first channel, and I'd compute go to transform and I click on Fourier transform as you can see the FFT module is connected to this switch module I could take it off if I wanted to but now it tells me that there's no data to perform the transform on so I come go over here and connect it back now this performed a Fourier transform on the first channel so to view that, I'd have to connect a viewer to this module, to this Fourier transform. So now I'd right click this again. I go to viewer. I click channel viewer. Now here's the Fourier transform of the first channel. If I want to change some properties in the Fourier transform, I click on the pink FFT module and then I could choose some properties such as the min max values or the resolution or changing the windows that's the properties of the FFT module now in order to perform a short-term Fourier transform or be able to see this in a time frequency plot I would do the same thing except I right click here and I go to compute enhanced and then go to fast short-term Fourier transform. Now fast means that the it's a faster calculation and this is only available in the professional version. So I click on fast short-term Fourier transform and now I want to attach a viewer to this fast STFT module. But the problem with a fast STFT is that you can't use a channel viewer because it needs to be a time frequency plot. So I'd right click this and I go to viewer and now all these viewers are grayed out. And the only one I can choose is a time frequency viewer, which is a spectrogram. So when I click on this, now a time frequency plot has appeared. Remember, this is all on the first channel. If I wanted to change it to the second channel, I could without changing much. All I'd have to do is click on the switch, which all these modules are connected to, and I change it to the second channel. Once I change it to the second channel, everything will begin calculating for the second channel. As you can see, the graphs all changed. If you didn't want it to auto calculate auto update I should say you can click this button right here this checkbox now when I change it back to channel 1 you can see that the bottom line is light blue instead of dark blue this shows that it hasn't finished calculating yet or it hasn't calculated yet so if I click the play button this will begin to update you can always hit stop mid-calculation if something is taking too long or you realize you need to change something. 
you can hit stop while it's calculating and it will terminate the process. So if you ever wanted to export your your graph into something such as uh, a PowerPoint or a Word document, you can right click your graph and copy it to a clipboard, export the file, or even print it out. Now if you want to make changes to let's say the x-axis, y-axis, you want to show a legend or change the title, this would all be done inside the viewer module. So as you can see, you can click the viewer module over here and now you have the properties for this viewer. You could change the default width, the height, or you can go down here and you'd be able to change the Y max values, the X max values, the C max values, etc. Or you can change the title. So over here you'd, you'd be able to change it to whatever you'd like. So I can say testing. And now the title has changed to testing. Now over here in the network window, the modules all have different colors. And those colors represent what the module does. For instance, green would be a data module, yellow are all viewers, and pink are calculation modules. So whenever you connect a module, let's say a fast trend estimator, for example, calculation modules are all in pink. All right, so that concludes this overview of Visual Signal. If you still have any questions, please refer to the Help menu. There's reference guides for you to view. Or you can contact support at ancad.com.